some general notes to be aware of regarding acidity trends. We'll start off with the halo acids, which are HX, and involve one hydrogen being bound to one of the halogens, which is the seventh column of the periodic table. Those get stronger as you move down the periodic table. So when you get to hydroiodic acid, HI, that is the strongest of all the halo acids. Whereas HF is the weakest due to its very strong bond strength. It's less likely to dissociate, partly due to the small radius of the fluoride and also due to the electronegativity of it. Now HF is still a strong acid when you're considering it physiologically. You don't want to consume HF, that can cause a lot of problems in the body. But in terms of general chemistry, it's actually not even classified as a strong acid because you can't assume that it dissociates completely. It still dissociates quite a bit, but not enough to where you can assume 100% dissociation. And so HF is the weakest of all the halo acids. And it's because of the strength of that bond between the F and the H that makes it weaker than HCl, HBr, and HI. For oxy acids, which are defined as something with a hydrogen, oxygen, and some other groups, the general rule is the more oxygen that you have, the stronger the acid becomes. And this makes sense because a lot of times with oxygen, you see oxygen being an electronegative species, which is comfortable holding electrons. But also, when you have multiple oxygen bonds, you can often see resonance as well. And resonance is something that stabilizes the conjugate base. And so you see this, for example, with chloric, perchloric, and hydrochloric acid. HClO3 is stronger than HClO2. And it's because the more oxygens that are there, the easier it is for it to handle those electrons when it gives up that proton. And if it can handle those electrons, then that means that the proton will stay dissociated for longer and is less likely to be picked up again. And if you can keep that proton dissociated, then you have a strong acid. That's the definition of one, one that can give up a proton and not take it back. So whenever you have an oxy acid, a good rule of thumb is the more oxygen that is in your compound, the stronger that acid will be because of the stability and potentially the resonance of the conjugate base, which contains a lot of oxygen atoms within it. Now for hydrides, and a hydride is anything that consists purely of hydrogens and one other element. And it could be something like HCl, or it could be something where you have multiple hydrogens bound to something like H2O, for example, or other species like that. Anything where you have just hydrogen and another element, those will increase in acidity as you move down into the right on the periodic table. Clearly, the halo acids on the far right with all the halogens are strong acids. And so as you move down into the right, any hydride will increase in strength. And so that's a good rule of thumb. Another thing to realize is that because the metals are on the left of the periodic table, hydrogen bound with just a, a metal will be either basic or neutral. It's not very acidic at all. So anytime you see hydrogen directly bound to some metal, it's not going to be very acidic, but will instead have basic or neutral properties. And finally, one other thing to be aware of is that whenever you're dealing with the polyprotic acid, meaning that's an acid that has more than one proton that it can donate. So it could be H2SO4, which has two hydrogens. It could be H2CO3, which has also two hydrogens but isn't classified as a strong acid the same way H2SO4 is. It could also be something like a triprotic acid, like phosphoric acid, which is h 3 PO3, or sorry, H3PO4. And that is something that is a triprotic acid. So anytime you have an acid with multiple hydrogens, what you can do is you can ignore the second and third protons unless you're titrating it. That first proton that is dissociated is so much more acidic than the others that it, these two don't play into the pKa and the pH very much 
The only thing is that when you're titrating, eventually you're going to be dissociating all of those protons. So when you're titrating, you can consider the second and third protons because those will change the shape of your titration curve. However, when you're doing calculations of acid strength, only look at that first proton that is being dissociated, and that's the only one you need to consider with a polyprotic acid. That is the one that defines the strength of a polyprotic acid like H2SO4, H3PO4, or any compound that has more than one acidic proton.